Hello, hello, back again, and this is a bit of a rush job. Um, I had this client book me at the last second, and she needed these out like the next day. So um, this is the first one that we're knocking off. Uh, the other one, I'm going to take a little bit longer. Um, I normally take like turnaround time is like a week uh, to get shots out after they've submitted their selection. So, okay, so it's not like a week after the session. It's a week after they've actually picked their finals. So I know which ones to actually work on. <clears throat> Anywho, um, this is a bit of a short notice. She was in a bit of a rush. Uh, she's got to get some business cards made. So I'm just knocking this one off uh, quick. I sometimes do that for clients, you know, just to help them out. I get uh, better reviews that way too. So let's uh, get into it. Uh, this one's a little bit different in that I have a white background on this one. Um, this shot is going to be used on the business cards. She's a real estate agent. And I was sure to find out uh, in advance the business cards background is white. So we shot her on a white background. We did some gray backgrounds as well. Give some, give some, some options. Uh, but the process is exactly the same. There's really no difference. Uh, let me get my control panel here uh yeah there really is no difference uh with how uh the retouching works um exactly the same as the gray background there might be some slight differences with um hair and stuff because sometimes while well, the white background as you can see it kind of causes this um kind of crunchies kind of thing in there uh, I don't think I'm really gonna get rid of a lot of this kind of stuff I may tame this stuff up here um, but these over here are probably gonna leave as is I might clean up around uh, this spot around her collar uh, just because this is getting a little kind of messy in here um, we've got some flex on the jacket. Um, I'm probably actually going to remove this ne necklace. Um, sometimes I, 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 most often I tell people to, uh, take jewelry off, um, as it is distracting in a headshot. But, uh, in this case I didn't, uh, it's small. I can get rid of it. No problem. It's not a problem. Um... Don't have to worry about the sensor hotspots in this one now, do we? Because of the white background, they're not sticking out as much. <clears throat> so let's tackle uh, the big stuff first and make sure that uh, we've got the right tools going on here. Um, regular stamp. There we go. That's more like it. Uh, just take care of these dust spots on the jacket. Goes a long way really cleaning things up couple over here even these slightly out of focus ones you know they still kind of jump out and you can still tell that they're there Okay, uh, let's tackle some of the skin texture here. Got some tonal blending I need to do in here as well. And I've got a ridge line in here that I have to address. All right. Um, <clears throat> jewelry, getting rid of this again, it's a two part approach, right? We're basically going to get rid of the texture information and then we will follow up with getting rid of the color information. As you can see, all the texture disappearing because we are actually painting over that texture with just skin texture. And then all that's left is the info that's on the color layer. And that's easy enough to get rid of after the fact. All right, let's just deal with this ridge line a bit. There's my walking doorbell, AKA the dog. <clears throat> uh, let's tackle this hair on this collar here. 
So we're just going to zoom in a little tighter because it is a little bit more detail work. Now I want my brush soft, but not crazy soft and just a little bit bigger than what is that? See, I changed my brush. Okay, harden the brush up just a little bit larger than this hair strand. And we're just gonna get rid of the texture detail first. And then we'll probably have to come back and hit the color portion as well. Yeah, see there's some darkening happening there. Well, that's easy to get rid of. So we're just cleaning up. They're almost like shadows at this point, but we're still going to clean them up. Get rid of these lines. These hairs were just coming around here. Didn't see them before because I wasn't in tight enough. Okay, clean. I seem to have been uh, forgetting to put the link to uh, the YouTube video that I've kind of got playing in the background. Uh, this one's, what's this one titled? This one's titled, uh, the channel is Bloom, B-L-U-M-E. Uh, this one's Sleep, Beautiful Chill Mix. I kind of like this kind of stuff. I know some people really want like, you know, loud banging stuff. Um, what's his name? Danny Diamond. Uh, he really likes to have his, uh, wouldn't call it EDM. It's, it is more dancey kind of stuff playing in the background. Me, I like to, you know, Zen, mm, you know, <clears throat> I think the, uh, library, hmm. that's more me. Okay. That, I'm going to have to fix the color bleed on that. Let's get to this over here. All right, let's go and tackle this color stuff first. I want to harden the edge up a bit because I am pushing harder edge in. Just going to bring those together. There, okay. Now these guys here, let's soften the brush a bit. Go a little, quite a bit bigger. And I'm just going to massage those transitions together. Apologies if you can't see this in YouTube. Their compression is pretty harsh, and we are doing some very subtle stuff in here. But I've gotten rid of the hair texture. I'm just blending the shadows that they were causing. Cool. So that's cleaned up. Before and after on those. Yeah, big difference. <clears throat> so let's get rid of this stuff down here now. The jewelry. Mixer brush is selected. I'm just going to push the skin color over top of the jewelry. We've already put the texture on it, so it is the skin texture. So now we're just covering up the color area color info. Now you got to be careful when you get into areas like this because uh, there is the white and you'll drag the white in. And we also want to maintain the shadow. Shadow that this shirt is actually casting. So I'm um, just small movements. In the end, I'm going to drag this shadow down. Blend those together. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yep. Is it, is this... No, I haven't actually glued anything together yet. I have to sand everything and paint it and... <clears throat> so this here, I'm just getting rid of the... Uh... She had some red splotches in her skin, so I'm just kind of blending all that together. Just so it's a little bit more uniform. <clears throat> and the ridge line. Uh, I'm just going to blend together uh, where it's darker and then lighter, which is just going to smooth that transition. And then you don't see the ridge line as much. that shadow that's that was there because I want to re-sculpt her chin Let's see, did I all go overboard with that? <laughs> I may have. So we can pull some of it back. Uh, let me grab my lasso tool. And the beauty of using this technique for retouching is I can just control, not L. Control J, that selection, bring it up over top, select these two, merge them together, and then clip it again, and I've got it back again. <clears throat> yes, I have to redo the necklace again, but at least, you know, I can undo just that section. This didn't take us more than two seconds to do that jewelry anyway, right? So, no biggie. And all it did was copy the color information. It didn't copy the texture info or the texture, uh, texture data. some more I am seeing some detail in here that I'm not happy with that up on this layer still? Did I miss that part? Let me see. Stamp. Yes, regular stamp tool. Yeah, it was just on that texture layer at all. together a bit and we'll do that that ridge line again here but we're going to be a little bit more delicate with it a little too heavy with it and it kind of flattened everything up it happens it happens don't beat yourself up about that if it happens to you, because it, look, it just happened to me. I 
all right i still see a little shadow here from the jewelry so we just got to blend that together a bit more bring that shadow down a bit further move that out all right that's a bit better uh, move back on to more texture stuff and this is just gonna be um, kind of blemish kind of stuff you'll notice that I turned off on my stamp tool uh, this little check marks here show overlay uh, and what that does is when it's on you'll notice that you got this gray center thingy and you can actually see the texture right uh, that's what is going to be stamped, but sometimes that gets in the way. So what I do is I just turn off that show overlay and now you don't see anything, but you can definitely see what you're about to actually tap on. <clears throat> so that was, uh, that was a good one when I found that option. Right. <clears throat> so these little uh, thingies here stamp these little spots in here okay we can use the tap approach just take a sample and then tap 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 i think uh in the art world that's called what was it point pointillism or i don't know if you know what that's called you let me know could have sworn it was called pointillism or pointism technique of of drawing And I've said it many, many times before, watch where you're sampling from uh, in relation to what you're going to paint on. Uh, watch the focus um, quality or focus level. See, this area is in very sharp focus, so I'm gonna sample from this to paint over this area here. If I grabbed this, which was very out of focus and painted over it, it sticks out like a sore thumb. So <clears throat> watch where you're sampling and painting to for the focus or the level of detail. Uh, teeth, we've got some texture details in here that we're gonna get rid of works just like any other part of the skin or the background um, just be careful when you get near the edge because you are going to get to that uh, kind of bleed kind of issue uh, it, it's it, well, it's not an issue um, you are painting over a texture that had some colored information in it. See that? So we're painting over the white. We've sampled here, we're painting over this area, but it has some of the underlying uh, color info underneath. <clears throat> so you actually have to bring in the mixer brush and just push as long as you're on the color layer, you have to push the white color over top. Just like so. <clears throat> and you'll find that's going to be on all the edges. Stamp. I'm just going to fill in all of this stuff in here. And then I'm going to sample down there. I'm going to turn off my aligned. I'm going to go pretty small. We're going to zoom right in. We're almost going to work on the pixel level here. And I'm just going to tap, tap, tap in between here. <clears throat> and then... Oh, crack in the neck. What we can do, this always helps sometimes as well. If you grab the the blur tool, uh, not too strong, 23% is fine. We go on our texture layer. We just do 
that just on that texture it just blends it together just ever so slightly so it doesn't look like it's too manipulated <clears throat> let's um no we can do these guys up here damp tool A lot of the other yellow ants are I'm going to leave for the uh, uh, the perfect smile tool, the script for teeth whitening. <clears throat> uh, let's take care of this stuff in here, though. This is texture info or texture data. Okay, so we got rid of the dark spots that are on the teeth. Uh, the teeth whitening will take care of the rest of that. So what other stuff are we going to take care of here? Um, just some spots of the skin for texture. Wrinkles. Man, most women are, are very much against wrinkles. I've only had one client that actually confronted me and said, don't touch my wrinkles. I worked very hard for them. <laughs> she was a very cool lady. <clears throat> but um, yes, no, wrinkles. I do not get rid of wrinkles. Uh, I may turn the volume down on them a bit, so they're just not as in your face. But when you get rid of wrinkles completely, uh, you end up looking like a Martian. So, and contrary to understanding that some people have, wrinkles is where the emotion lives. Like, think about it. When you smile and things get all scrunched up, it's because you're smiling that they get scrunched up. If you have a smile and you get rid of the scrunching, you kill the smile and it looks, it, now it looks fake. So, don't completely kill or my line back on don't completely kill wrinkles just doing a little bit of a hair cleanup around the top here and some bumps in the skin got a little something sitting in the hair Okay, so I did not notice this when I was shooting, but it appears that my client here had a bit of a weave going on and you can see the weave happening. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually cover that up. So we'll just get the texture, put the texture over top of that and we will... <clears throat> okay, here's another neat tip for you, okay? We gotta make our brush a bit bigger take our sample we got to turn the overlay back on and let's see if I can remember the the key shortcut was it alt and then no <clears throat> alt is actually gonna do the sample okay I figured it out Ugh. keyboard shortcuts it's not even listed in um, the Photoshop keyboard shortcuts menu, as you saw, I actually pulled up the keyboard list there. Um, so yeah, I had to go online and find it again. What, uh, the keyboard shortcut that I was looking for is, uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse is down here. It's on the clone source uh, tab. There is a rotate command. The problem is, is, um, if you're rotating, oh, look at that. It's woken up in a way. Um, what it does is it's going to rotate the, the source. And if you can see what it's doing right there, it's, it's rotating the source clockwise. Um, so that here, I, 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 I you can see it. 
better on the screen. I'll just harden up my, my stamp layer and you can see. So we're going to paint what's in this gray circle over top of where that uh, hair weave is there. But it's the hair is going in the wrong direction. So what we can do is we can rotate the source material uh, by hitting shift alt. And then it's the uh, it's not the arrow keys uh, on a security keyboard. It's the comma period arrows, the left and right arrows. And if you hit shift alt and then you tap these, what you'll notice is, is you can rotate uh, the source layer so that now this hair is actually going in the direction that we want to go over top of that hair weave. I'm just going to soften my brush up a bit and we're just going to paint once we select the right layer, that layer, uh, we're just going to paint that hair texture over top of that weave. Okay. And we're just going to reset our rotation. Just going to paint in little bit of hair texture in here. Okay, the color's off though, right? We still got the color. Well, you know how to solve that now. Get our mixer brush and I don't know what brush that is. We'll just put our regular brush on there. Texture transfer. We don't need that uh, build up. We can turn smoothing off. crazy one um okay and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna brush this darker that's not the right one that's because i've got that color selected okay hang on a second let me refresh re let me reset this brush because something was going weird with this <clears throat> okay and I think I want these ones on. Yes, that was clean brush. Uh, load the brush after each stroke. Yes. There we go. There's the title of the music it's playing. This one is clean brush and clean brush after every stroke and then load brush with every stroke. Let's turn that one off and then we don't have any color in there at all. And now we're just going to brush that darker color over top. So what did we do? We that hair weave, we color it, we covered it up. First, we put the texture down over top and then we put the color over top. So it's completely gone. All right. So many interruptions in this one. This is crazy. Um, I'm going to just clean up a bit of this stuff here, uh, with my stamp tool. My rotation is, is reset already. So let's just clean up some of that. And what we could probably do is we could even leave the color info on there. Um, let's go to our go to here. Let's take our flow down like 14%. I'm just gonna ever so slightly push in the background color on that stuff. Just so they're, they're kind of there, but they're not, you know, just soften it, pull it back a bit. Uh, while we're here, we're going to get rid of that, uh, this black part, which is my lights. Jumping in the shot. Oh, I'm just going to push some more of the white into the top here. If we kick our solar on, you might see that. Yeah, see that purplish kind of thing there? Uh, slight little tonality change. Oh, I just want to make sure that this white background is really white everywhere. I hit the backgrounds with two uh, ELC 125s on either side. Those are Alacrum heads. Um, the interesting thing is I find there is a lot of fall off at the top of her head. So what I've had to do is 
Um, I actually have the the heads like pointing really, really high up. I was surprised at how high up I'm actually got them pointing. Um, and that seems to have really evened it out like to this extent. Uh, but I was really amazed at how much uh, fall off there was <clears throat> height wise. Um, originally, I had them at uh, at about head height and they were just shooting straight to the background. And that wasn't that wasn't enough The like the top of the frame was really falling off. The bottom was really nice and bright, but the top was falling off. So that's why I had to, to tilt them up. Um, yeah, I don't know. You got to do what you got to do, right? Okay. Um, I think that is all pretty good. Uh, let's get rid of these two layers because we don't need them. I'm going to put our DMB and it's smacked it in the middle of our FS layer. So I'm going to drag that out. Okay. Turn off the Viz and that RT layer because we don't need them. Our Dodge, I'm gonna, just going to kiss those. Brush, brush, 1%. I'm just going to kick up. Especially this bottom one. I kick the bottom one up a bit more because... The lights actually turned down. I don't have it as bright as the other three because I don't like under lighting too much. When you under light, it just starts looking weird, looks odd. So the lights are set to what they should be to light the person properly. But I want the catch light to kick out a bit more, so I have to burn it a bit or I have to dodge it a bit. Uh, we're just going to uh, burn the eyebrows. A little bit darken on the upper eyelid. And then we're going to pull it back, obviously, because we always go a little too heavy handed with it. Yeah, right around there. That's good. OK, don't need this viz or that retouch layers. We'll take those down, collapse the layer, and then when you run, the uh, other actions, it doesn't go inside that folder or that group. Uh, let's grab our brush, our regular brush, 100% flow. We can take our brush size down and we're just going to hit the teeth. We've already taken care of the texture in the teeth with the, the, the spots that were there. So this is just taking care of really any kind of yellowing there we go that's cool i might actually pull this down a bit sixty three that's good uh we do not need to put a vignette on this but we do need to throw our sharpener i'm just going to sharpen up the eyes a bit hit the mouth like i normally do okay on these I don't really have to adjust uh, any of the uh, the settings on the scripts as far as how much blur is used or anything like that because all my shots are exactly the same uh, resolution and they're the same subject so don't gotta don't gotta change it around if um, <clears throat> obviously if your subject is changing uh, and you've got a different you know, your different size um, resolution camera. If that's changing, then yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to vary uh, the the settings on the on the blurs and whatnot, just so that they blur enough or not too much. You know that kind of thing. Uh, I am gonna throw my raw grain on here just to kind of make everything cohesive. And there we go. That one's done. We look in our shadows and he's got a little bit of noise going on there. Yeah, just the ever so little, ever so little. Cool. This one's done in the books. Ship it on out. Uh, oh, one thing that I was actually going to do before I send this out and we're going to put this above the DMB layer. I'm just going to put another curves on here. 
and uh, I'm gonna put a point in the center and just do my little oopsie don't want to do that you want that one I just want to give it a, just a touch more punch uh, when I sent the samples over the proofs I bumped up the contrast a bit Just a little bit of a punch that down to around there. That's cool. I like that. Okay. Ta-da! Finito. Uh, I've got more to do though. I've got I've got so many more that I gotta get uh, that I gotta get finished. So hey, um, that seems. Oh, because I made a selection. Uh, um, yeah. If you like this one, as the other ones. Leave some comments, leave a thumbs up. That would thumbs up. That would be great. Uh, if you've got any questions, type them down below and I'll see if I can answer them. I will catch you again in the next one. Uh, ciao for now. <laughs>